The most unforgettable day in my life was April 11, 1945. It was on that day that, as a young American Army chaplain, I served with frontline troops across Europe, and then, precisely on that day, came upon the infamous, notorious Buchenwald concentration camp. I had heard nothing of Buchenwald until that day. It was only my sad experience to have seen, to have participated in the ravages of war, to have seen city, cities laid waste and homes destroyed and human beings crushed. But especially do I consider it a privilege, tragic and grievous though it was, to have come face to face with the stark, bitter, sordid reality of Jewish tragedy. As I mentioned a moment ago, I came upon this hellhole called Buchenwald within a matter of hours after the first columns of American tanks rolled through and liberated that dungeon on the face of this earth. I do indeed consider it a privilege, tragic, sad, to have been among those who literally opened the gates of hell. Obviously, I don't have the time now to go into any details to even attempt to describe the scenes that met my eyes that are so indelibly engraved upon my heart and mind. The crematoria. I saw hundreds of human bodies strewn in front of the ovens that were still hot, the smoke still curling upward, waiting, waiting to be shoveled into the furnaces. How can any human being ever forget such a sight? I stood there in front of those hot ovens, my eyes riveted to that view I, I I must tell you that whenever I even attempt to repeat this story, to relive that moment, it is exceedingly difficult to do so. But I don't want to dwell on that, nor do I want to take the time to even attempt to describe beyond those first moments when I ran to seek out Jews, to find Jews who were still alive, and indeed there they were, in a long series of low barracks, I ran into one after another, and there again, no matter what we have seen or heard, believe me, there simply are no words in the human vocabulary that can even remotely attempt to describe the horrors, the brutal, inhuman horrors that were perpetrated against our people. Within this huge Buchenwald camp, there was one area that was called Das Kleine Lager, the small camp that was reserved especially for the brutal treatment of Jews. I went into those barracks, and there I saw just raw planks of wood shelves on which were strewn st scraggly, stinking straw sacks, and there they were looking down at me, men, a few boys. There were no women in Buchenwald. But I will never forget those eyes, haunted with fear, half-crazed, emaciated, more dead than alive. Spontaneously, intuitively, I felt the only language that I could speak that most of them would understand was Yiddish. And I called out, Sholem Aleichem Yidin, Yirz and Frei, you are free. The war is over. And there they were looking out at me through incredulous eyes. But again, I can't continue. I could go on and on. But from that moment, I must tell you that my life changed. The impact of that experience was enormous on the whole course of my career. What can we take away from all of these? I spent many, many weeks with these people trying to rehabilitate, 
to reorganize, to negotiate, to rearrange and rejoin families. This obviously is a very long story. But the one thing that we must remember is that we must remember. We must continue to tell this story. We must continue to give the lie, obviously, to those vicious people, these quasi so-called phony historians who have the gall, the temerity, the audacity, the, the horrible chutzpah to attempt to negate, to minimize, to deny the enormity of our tragedy. We must tell the world, a world that frankly wants to forget. We must not let that world forget. We must surely continue to tell our children, our children's children. For in a very real sense, all of us are survivors. Most of the people who are gathering in Javits, in Javits Center at this moment are of course survivors. But you and I, who were not there at that time, we are survivors. Our children, our grandchildren, generations yet unborn, are survivors. We, are, so we have survived for a very real purpose, not just so that life can go on as it was, life as usual. We survived precisely so that we can continue to tell the story, so that we can keep alive the truths, the ideals for which so many of our people gave, out, gave their lives to remember that, if I might just use the phrase that characterizes so much of our lives, that we must remember Ezecha the Churban. But not only must we remember the Churban, we must remember the creative, dynamic, meaningful life of European Jewry before the Holocaust. We must perpetuate the ideals for which they gave their lives so that, without any cliches, so that all their martyrdom should not have been in vain. These are the memories that I carry with me. This is the message that I would love to share with our people, never to lose faith, certainly to strengthen our commitment to God, to Torah, to Israel, the faith, the land, the people, and thus hopefully, yet live to see a world at peace. Thank you.